Hi, this is Manuel Delta Lima 2, Mike Alpha November. Welcome back to my channel. Today we finally get to talk about hardware again. Um, let me give you a little bit of background. The reason why I fought uh, so long for not needing to update uh, the hardware of the TrueSDX, even though we knew there were flaws and um, errors and um, the reason is never change a running system. Um, we knew there were flaws, but the flaws were known and we knew how to bypass them. Um, at a certain point, uh, Guido discovered how to fix this uh, speaker howling thing and he uh, published a fix for that, which looks pretty complicated to the normal user. And I had a look at it and I had a look at the PCB design and I thought, well, this is easily to be implemented in the PCB design, so why not try it? So I did a revision 1.1 1 .1, uh, TrueSDX mainboard and we tested it. It worked, but we went all the way, tested it up to 10 meters and realized, okay, there was a problem with um, basically the op amp being put out of balance by some DC voltage building up. Um, and this could be solved by, by changing the, the op amp. Uh, basically it was the same op amp, but from another source and it fixed the issue. So it was quite critical where you obtained the components in order to have a running TrueSDX. So we, again, redesigned the PCB uh, for 1.2 revision and just want to mention that why the giveaway true SDX is so very special because it is the 1.1 revision that will never be released. There will be a 1.2 coming soon. This is the video about 1.2, but this will stay a rarity as it never got released. So the winner of this will be uh, in possession of a collector's item. Okay, so let's talk about the 1.2 revision I received today and this video will be the approval video or the testing video. I'm going to talk about the features and, and what we did with it. Okay, so this is it. We are going to have a closer look really soon. Um, we added some capacitors to block that building up DC voltage so a component tolerance is no longer an issue. And while at it, we analyzed uh, the main cause of failure for TrueSDX are three things. Um, the first thing is people are doing reverse polarity connection, boom, burn, that's it. The second one is while probing around they are shorting something um, and it goes up into smoke. And the third one is uh, some bad SWR thing or a combination which is causing the PA to blow and suddenly you have a short circuit and everything else is smoking up. And in order to prevent this, or at least to help you to prevent further chain reaction from happening, uh, we implemented some kind of uh, short circuit protection and overcurrent protection. So this PCB now has a reverse polarity diode and a polyfuse inside, or on board, let's say. Uh, once we are over a certain amount of current, it will just switch off and block the DC path, so no more current is flowing. The fun thing about that is you do not need to exchange those types of fuses, they will recover over time. So you just let it sit for five minutes and your radio is good to go once you have fixed your original issue. We are going to put this to a test as well, but first of all let's test if the speaker howling fix works and then move on from there. Let's go. Okay, first of all I need to apologize because I wanted to provide you with uh, high quality audio, but look what happens when I put the, the audio transmitter next to the TrueSDX. He doesn't like it, so I need to switch to, uh, to onboard microphone, sorry for that. This is how I'm going to test this, uh, now with onboard audio. Um, on the left you see a revision 1.0 mainboard, unmodified, and on the right you see the 1.2 um, mainboard, unmodified. 
I made sure, first of all, that the frequency is set correctly on both. I calibrated it on both. Um, our shunt is defined by the high bands board I'm using. Um, built from a kit from Sunny, as usual. And I'm using the same RF board on both main boards in order to have that variable eliminated. So we are using this board on this and on this for a fair comparison. Both have the same um, latest alpha version software installed, um, as I said, calibrated. And yeah, I'm going to plug it in now and we see how it behaves. So this is the Revision 1.0 mainboard. You can see the firmware is 2.00 uniform. Now let's go to CW mode. Let's go first of all to the here you can see this is the behavior on 10 meters. You see that speaker howling. Let me see at what volume. Volume 12 in CW. I'm going to crank it up. 14. Now I'm going to switch to CW. And this is at a point where it's unusable with onboard speaker. See? Now I'm going to swap the thing. Uh, for the 1.2 mainboard. Again, we start with the uh, mainboard 1.2, firmware revision 2.00 uniform. Now, I'm already at 10 meters CW. As you can see, level 14. Yeah, okay, it barely begins now. There is a point where we get this filter noise. This is level 15. Level 13 is usable. And you can crank it up a little bit more with this fix. And by the way, uh, the overall receiver performance is a little bit better with that mainboard. Now let's test the other features. Oh, that doesn't feel right. <laughs> So, you see already something bad happening. Um, I put the, the plus in the ground and I'm now going to connect ground to plus, short, see this? The thing is my current limitation already kicks in from the from the power supply, I'm now going to do something completely against all my intuition. I'm going to increase the current limitation so the fuse can kick in. Okay, what happened? Yeah, see this? It stopped when I reversed polarity and the fuse kicked in and the, the protection of the power supply cut off. Now let's see if it still works. <laughs> That's interesting. We, we had a full reverse polarity now with, uh, you could see, over one amp. Huh. See, it still works. So it seems to have worked. That's one good news. Though this, this shows already the, the principle. Um, Whenever there's too much current involved, the onboard polyfuse will protect us. So let's test the receiver real quick. Um, the TrueSDX is now at minus 112. I'm going to inject a signal with minus 76 dBm. Minus 76 dBm. Going to switch sidebands. Minus 104 so that's 30 db of sideband suppression that's about the level we get let's have a look at cw going to set it to the right frequency and as you can see minus 76 db so receiver is also working great okay so we tested this i think we call it a success um Reverse polarity and overcurrent protection is working, receiver is working, transmitter is working, but that kind of was clear because uh, this is a, a, an old RF board 
I didn't expect anything not to work. Um, so from my side it's approved. And by the way, uh, the PCBs were provided by Sunny. So thank you Sunny. And this is approval. You can go in mass production and sell them. So watch out, they will soon be available for everybody. Revision 1.2 is released now with overcurrent protection and Guido speaker mod. Okay guys, let me know what you think in the comments and well, see you next time. Uh, leave a like, please subscribe to the channel if you not already have and this is it. See ya!